Hi, everybody. So it is my name is uh, Benoit Malheur. I'm the uh, head of the marine department at uh, at Dumeka and also the product manager of the Fine Marine Software. Um, my pleasure to be here with you virtually today uh, for this uh, marine uh, seminar. Uh, I have collected for you um, uh, several slides uh, for um, for my presentation, and I wanted to give you the most complete overview uh, on this uh, Fine Marine software. What is capable to do, what is maybe not capable to do, uh, and of course, please uh, send all the questions you may have on this software. I should be able to answer all of them. Um, so, Fine Marine is, is not new on the market. Huh? It has more than 13 years of experience uh, on the market, but the development itself has started more than 25 years ago. And since then, we have uh, accumulated a, a very large uh, community of users, uh, always a very nice uh, community to talk with. And ourselves, we are a team of marine engineers. Uh, some of them are naval architects, some of them are just marine passionate. And this is certainly something that's differentiated from any other provider uh, for CFD. Uh, we have dedicated services and support, uh, as well, of course, for, for any uh, question you may have. Uh, among the application we, we can tackle with the software, it's, it's wide. Uh, we, can, we can do cargo vessels, uh, sailing yachts, the offshore, uh, the, the work boats, uh, very high-speed motor boats. We have seen that just with the presentation of Thomas. Uh, some military vehicles or many others, like kayaks, like tsunamis, like uh, a lot of different applications. Uh, in terms of customers, uh, since mentioned that we can cover a lot, wide range of applications, we have marine specialists, we have shipyards, we have sailing yachts. And by the way, I hope that you are watching the America's Cup series at the moment because it's uh, quite, quite interesting to see. And I hope you, you should support uh, Emirates Team New Zealand since uh, they are using Fire Marine and they are defender of the America's Cup uh, at the moment. Uh, and we have suppliers as well for popular manufacturer um uh, that we have around the world uh now if we enter really the specifics of uh, what fine marine can really do in terms of uh, studies the typical studies that you can do with uh you can make resistance simulation which is very basic now you can do sea keeping simulation propulsion maneuvering and one which is a bit aside from the other ones is wind study application why because we see that that wind study is only one fluid is only the air where all the other ones are making or mixing the two fluid at the same time so in terms of workflow first you have to know that fiber is supported on windows and linux uh, it can work on laptops workstation or even on clusters and in terms of workflow we start with a mesh generator uh, which is called Express for the air record. Uh, we have the computation setup itself, which is done through the Fine Marine uh, global interface, the flow solver, uh, which is uh, IZ CFD, and the post processor, which is called CFD. Uh, then we have for this workflow, um, it can be fully automated. Sven mentioned that a few minutes ago. We done that with through Python, and it's extremely useful because all the uh, the classic tasks that you want to do you can or that you want to repeat you can code it and you can relaunch the the, the script or so good to know as well that there is an automatic recording of all the action that you are doing through the interface which means that once you have done all the few clicks all the clicks that you wanted to do you save the corresponding script and you can replay it again for any other project so this kind of workflow gave us a lot of ideas uh, 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, we were thinking, OK, so since we can automate everything from A to Z, and since we have seen that actually our user was starting to do it by themselves, we say, OK, OK, all done, guys. We can do it for you. And this is how the C wizard was born. So the C wizard is uh, an automatic setup. It can do the mesh generation setup and the computation setup for you. So, of course, it reduced the user interaction and the potential errors and increased product productivity because it's super fast and is uh, totally uh, in adequation with the documentation, all the guidelines that we recommend for the Fine Marine software. In terms of application, it's, since it has evolved since 10 years now, let's see with that, we have the resistance, uh, which can be a fully automated planning regime. Um, the one that we just seen, for instance, could be made with uh, with this one, 
uh, during the presentation of Thomas. The selling yard VPP. Why we differentiate? Because VPP is for a matrix of simulation. So the series art can handle matrix of simulation. Hydrofoil, trim optimization, sea keeping, open water propellers, PMM, and even roll decay. All that is fully automated. Uh, so this is something which looks like this. You will get a demo from Sven in a few, few minutes. So uh, uh, you will uh, get all the information about this. And uh, once everything is done, you can launch the simulation and you can you even have some automatic post processing tools. You can, uh, of course, watch the free surface elevation, calculate the weighted area, compute some streamlines, the force by section. So you cut the, the vessel, for instance, to see where the most, um, uh, what is the best contribution on the drag, for, uh, which part of the boat is most uh, contributing to the, to the drag. You can analyze what's happening in the propeller region. Um, you can represent even the towing tank line, uh, some plot wave elevation, etc. The list is not even extensive here, and all, all this is also fully automated. Uh, and we also have so coefficients or um, uh, graphical or plot representation of the result for the conversions, of course, uh, for all the forces, motions, uh, number of cells, uh, weighted area evolution and all the propulsion and self-propulsion coefficient that we all the Navar architect and marine engineer are used to are computed automatically as well out of this of the fine marine software so i think this is also the key message saying that fine marine is a definitely a, a super dedicated software to the marine uh to the marine applications all right so now let's start and let's answer details of the cfd uh setup itself or the cfd details um First, we have to create a mesh. Uh, of course, the mesh should be uh, with uh, the best quality possible. It should be done in a relatively uh, limited amount of time, and if possible, in an automatic way. So we have two possibilities, either in a structured way or in an unstructured way. So this is quite a basic difference. Structure means that uh, you have a nice and well-known uh, distribution of all the blocks of the mesh uh, and of every cell as a neighbor or as uh, all the neighbors around it. In an unstructured way, it's totally different because you build a, uh, a mesh uh, for which you can have, for instance, what we call hanging nodes. So a cell could have two neighbors, for instance. Uh, so this is very uh, important to to use the unstructured way for marine application because for the free surface capturing, for instance, you need anisotropic meshes, and this is much better and much easier to be done with an unstructured mesh generator. The same for the complexity. Structured meshes are very nice uh, for propellers, but as soon as we start to mesh a boat, forget about it. We have to switch to unstructured mesh generation, and this is where Express is very good at. It can mesh pretty much everything uh in terms of complexity and in terms of uh, uh marine application all right so now you have your mesh uh what you can do with it you can deform it with a weighted deformation so you can see the, uh, the, the short animation on on the lower part uh it's it's very fast there is no interpolation but it's limited by the motion so for instance if we take a ship the ship can trim and sink right uh, we have seen that in the presentation of Thomas as well. It's typical for resistance. It, and so all the cells around the ship will be deformed, right? Now let's say this is not enough. I want to do more uh, than just uh, a limited amount of motion. So I can go for another level, which is called sliding grid. A sliding grid means that we have two separated domains. That's why I put two colors on my uh, short animation here. Uh, and you can have one individual uh, motion compared to the other one where it's not moving at all. Of course, here we have one interpolation, and it's almost limitless in, to, in terms of motion. And let's say it's not enough. You want still to go for a very advanced uh, handling of the mesh uh, management. You can go for overset, or you know, the name is chimera approach, or overlapping is also another name. Uh, so here, still the same motion for all these ones, but here you can see that we have two different meshes, and the gray one is overlapping, is on top of the blue one. Right, so which means that we are interpolating the solution between the two meshes in 3D. Okay, so it basically means that we are using the weighted deformation for, uh, for instance, the trim and sink. Uh, we are using sliding grid for the rotation of the propellers, of course, they, because they need their own kinematic, their own motion. And we are using oversets, for instance, for very large motion, for crossing ships, for uh, rudder execution. Uh, 
we see that uh, some demos afterwards um, and so on. So if we take, for instance, an example, a lifeboat, for instance, where you have a big motion because in terms of, of amplitude, the motion is, is super large. It starts from the offshore platform and it, it falls into the water. So if you look at the overlapping grid here and the background there here, with this little uh, animation, you can see that it's falling down, falling into the water that I didn't present here, but you can guess where it is. And we can see that the motion has no limit. Um, something which is absolutely unique on the market is a super fast and robust adaptive grid deployment in the flow solver. It means that Express is nice, we can build a basic mesh, but you, you might say, okay, but actually I don't know what will happen in terms of physics during my mesh simulation. It's quite hard to predict for myself. This is the role of CFD, so I should not uh, spend too much time in, in, in predicting myself or anticipating myself everything that will happen during the simulation. So I need to rely on something else. And this tool is the adaptive grid deployment. Let's look at the, this example of a high-speed boat here. Um, it's gone with the sea wizard as well. And initially there is almost no mesh. It's a very relatively coarse mesh, right? And then progressively you see that the, uh, you see the establishment of uh, the free surface refinement in the wake of, uh, of the boat, which is totally fine and, and so this is what the adaptive grid farm is doing, is, is polishing, is improving the mesh that you have done uh, basically in Express. And so now you can say, okay, man, I, I can even combine the oversets and the adaptive grid refinement, and then I can make sea-keeping simulation for which I have an overset uh, mesh for the, for the vessel here, which is going up and down, trim and sink, and so on. And plus, I'm adding on top of it adaptive grid refinement, uh, which is following the wave uh, pattern here, the wave, uh, the waves generation here, and also making sure that the transfer of the information between the two domains are doing fine. So I guess you know pretty much everything that you need to know for uh, for uh, for meshing. Now you can go for the application. In terms of resistance, typically it's a symmetry plane. You do half of the boat. The range of cell count is between one million and five million cells mesh for fully appended um, meshes. It can work on standard machines, so like workstation. And very typical uh, simulation time is three hours to eight hours, depending, of course, on the cell count and the phone number. We have validated uh, five marines since 25 years. So we mentioned that on resistance. Resistance, resistance for us is not a thing anymore. It's, it's very standard. There is nothing to prove anymore. So you can definitely rely on, on, on five marines and also on the sea without to predict it right the first time. Uh, for low phone number, for high phone number, for the range is up to 1.33 here with very nice correlation with experimental data coming from a customer, this one. Um, and something that we, I think I, we never insist enough on this, uh, on this information is that Fine Marine is a CFD software and as such, it can work on model scale, but also at full scale, which is a drastical change compared to, to the experimental condition or, or the model basin that we are used to work with some, from time to time, uh, because they, they are only a model scale and we need to extrapolate. And this extrapolation is never, is never exact because of a simple thing, the Reynolds number cannot be preserved. And as such, the turbulence may change. Uh, if the turbulence is not high, maybe you can have a nice correlation, but if turbulence is start to be a thing, then it's very, very difficult uh, for them to extrapolate the data to full scale. So you may have surprises when you extrapolate to full scale. And so that's why CFD is very good to model at model scale and full scale. And I always advise to, to all my users, if you can, or if you, if you start with new design, do it at full scale right away. There is no need to spend time to, to do anything at model scale. And this is where you start to need to, 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 to play with the roughness, for instance. So roughness starts to be important and you, you can apply it in, in, the, in the CFD software because you can see that the painting, for instance, just the painting or the foiling, uh, which are going to glue onto the ship, it's very important. The drag could increase, I hope you are well seated, but the, gri uh, the, the drag can increase on the ship like that to up to 30% because just of the foiling. So it is very important to take this anchor to account when you are doing all your designs. So as soon as you can, uh, you understood how to, to make resistance, it means that you can make mattresses or several 
uh, resistance point. And this is uh, one of the application of that could be just a resistance curve, but also a trim optimization where you try to find the best compromise in terms of loading condition and also the, the initial trim that you impose at the port with the ballast um, uh, for the ship. So you can find what is the best compromise between all the speeds and loading condition. And the CWZ can do that all automatically. So you can set up 200 simulation if you want. Everything is automatic with the CWZ. So uh, all the testimonial that I think, okay, I could, I could put uh, 10 slides if I want uh, of testimony, but there is one that I always like to quote is the one from Nils Moore from Van Ossanen. Over 100 case studies that they have done, five marine experimental results were always comparable within 2%. For 98 cases, for the last two cases, the experimental data were wrong. So I think it proves what I was saying. Resistance is absolutely not a question anymore. The accuracy is total. Now, if you go to CKPing, it's a higher level of complexity. You can model stock waves, meaning regular waves, irregular waves, or even your own user-defined uh, spectrum if you want. Uh, here, the, the range of time is quite large as well, because we can start from a 3 million cells mesh barrel, large wave period, to a 10 million cells mesh, fully appended, low wave period. Uh, and you have to double that if it's not a symmetric condition, if the waves are coming from uh, any uh, degree uh, of uh, compared to the, to the ship itself. So you might need a standard workstation or go up to a cluster if necessary or cloud solution, uh, for instance. As it can start from uh, several days, but up to weeks if we are talking about irregular ways. Irregular ways, and this is ITC standard, you need to encounter 100 waves to be able to make statistics. It's huge, it's massive. So you need to wait a lot of time, a physical time. It's not actually a CPU time, it's really physical time that you need to wait that the simulation does everything that is required. It's very long simulation, 30 minutes of simulation of a physical time. Uh, Again, we have, uh, we have validated, we participate uh, to all the workshops available for, for, um, uh, for the marine industries and uh, hydrodynamics uh, validation. Uh, Tokyo workshop 2015, I was there. It's, it's, it's uh, very nice, a lot of cases available, a lot of experimental data that we also collected and, and performed. Uh, one video from a customer comparing, um, don't get confused, CFD is on the left, experimental data are on the right. So it's typically something you can do with the post processor we have. So you quite try to mimic the reality and to make a nice animation, quite representative. Could be a nice point for you, for the customer to make it quite real like, in the end. Uh, and the, the, of course, the results were, were very good. In terms of propulsion, uh, we have a lot of possibilities. Uh, you can push on center of gravity, uh, just to force an actuator disk to simulate the presence of, of the, the propeller and, and, and then a real propeller with model with a sliding grid. We have seen that before. Uh, the same accuracy can, can start from very simple thing to a couple of days if necessary when the, the, the propeller is really modeled here. We can also do, of course, cavitation on top of it. A lot of validation as well in this pen form and structure meshes, structure meshes as well. Both of them are, are, are well uh, handled for open water simulation. Uh, wide range of turbulence modeling uh, from two equations to several equations, EISM, DES uh, simulation as well. They provide much better insight, but at, uh, at a given cost. So that's to be, uh, to be understood. We also have a self-propulsion concept, meaning that you can just impose the ship speed and we find automatically, this is the Numica approach on the right, the propeller rotation speed or vice versa, you impose the propeller rotation speed and we find the ship speed or you impose the power going out of the engine and then we, we compute the two at the same time. Uh, so we have developed our own controller to be able to make that in one single computation. So this is the validation. We can do one propeller or even two propellers uh, if you want and we can find the equilibrium position automatically. In terms of maneuvering, we can do all the uh, standard uh, from the IMO uh, 137, that's all required. Uh, course keeping, your turning circle, stopping, crash, uh, crash stop, uh, zigzag, turning circle, and so on. For this, you need a lot of motion laws, uh, which are predefined in the software. You can, you can even program it yourself, like with an interpreter of, of, uh, of motion laws that you can just type here. 
Um, we have also validated that with uh, a lot of person, customers, users, uh, even PhD uh, guys or professors. This one is coming from University of Galatis in Romania, uh, where they studied the role decay and the correspondence uh, with uh, EFD and experimental uh, uh, results are excellent here. Uh, a PhD student has done a zigzag simulation into Berlin for us. Benoit, your voice is uh, disappear, I think. Yes, for me as well. <laughs> Benoit, your voice disappears. Running circle as well to find the, the register uh, duration of the ship. You can do course keeping. Uh, this is quite an hypnotic uh, slide here, but you can see that the boat is going in all directions, different kind of waves. We have studied all of them, and we compare with experimental data as well. Everything is, is well controlled. You even have this case as a demo case. It's this one of the cases I think I consider the most advanced in terms of CFD application nowadays, and it's available for you inside the, the package for free. And all the whole setup is available, is ready to be launched, ready to be checked um in the documentation we can even do cables as well so for instance you can uh, have two tugboats which are uh, trying to help the the big ship here uh i would say to to park in the ports if i can say so uh but it's, it's quite extensive you can see that we have used here over set simulation so the two tugboats are individually meshed and we have another one which uh, for the another mesh for the uh, for the container ship here uh, and so we can uh, compute the tension in the cables and try to, to see when it could break or what are the the impact on this kind of cells of uh, of the vessel and so on uh, in terms of motion uh, the last application i wanted to talk about is the wind studies because they are quite challenging nowadays uh for so for passenger comfort but also for gas emission they try to reduce that a lot um so we can study a lot of possibilities a huh? uh, flatter rotor so make polar plots for sailing boats smoke dispersion as well um and one of the most important thing is the 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 complexity of the mesh which can be quite a challenge um and for this um we we started to tackle that provide precise guidelines because if you look at this kind of uh, of mesh here i'm jumping directly to this slide uh, where we actually want to see what's happening on the deck of of the ship with all the circulation and so on you have a lot of details that you might want to mesh and for this uh, we have defined a lot of uh, uh, a new tool we have defined quasi automatic measuration um, which we made on that uh, because you cannot afford to spend time to click on every single patch and say i want uh, five refinements i want this cell size here and so that that's well too complex so we need a very high level vision on how to mesh this kind of thing and this is something we can provide uh, for, uh already today so just yeah sorry just going back to the slide before it's quite interesting as well good to know that the for wind studies application so only here here we can model the wind profile uh, with atmospheric boundary layer as well and here the range of application is massive it's huge you can start with a 5 million cells mesh very simple geometry of course to up to 100 million cells mesh i've seen that already because people want to tackle not only the complexity of the of the structure or the superstructure of the ship but also the complexity of the flow and the accuracy of the flow so if you really want to do that in a in a monofree mode you have to switch to des simulation if you're really targeting high precision. And for this, you need a very dense uh, mesh and you can go up to 100 million cells. But the result can be splendid. So this is a validation, for instance, from Dam and Shipyard on, on uh, they want to replace the wind tunnel uh, by CFD. So they actually check that and evolve. so they are modeling the, mod the wind tunnel itself and they study the urine, so and study uh, uh runs a uh, equation so to typically with k omega turbulence model or with des of course they compare that and they observe of course some very particular uh, instabilities and so on that they could not maybe reproduce with a typical runs application so runs is nice to get average data uh deltas between design a design b but kind of provide very detailed information on the flow because you have huge recurrent circulation and this is where the limits of your runs is is uh, identified 
So if I look at a splendid emission they did, so you can see that uh, you can see the isosurface uh, clock with the second invariant, show, so showing the rotation and all the vortices behind the ship. Uh, here, colored by the helicity to see in which direction it's rotating the flow. But here, I think we can also say that it's quite chaotic, but quite interesting to see. Um, one of the last points I wanted to mention in my presentation today is for the, the smoke dispersion. Uh, you can do that in different ways. One of them is the passive or active scalar. Passive meaning that there is only one uh, scalar which is transported in the fleet, so it's quite passive. And then you have the active mode where we actually also consider the temperature of this uh, fluid as well and the solute, so meaning the density differences. And so thanks to that, you have more accuracy on the, uh, on the uh, smoke that is going out of the, of the chimney, for instance. Uh, thanks to Chantil Atlantique in France, uh, French Simpyard, they validated that against very uh, experimental data and they computed the angle that you can see here compared to the, yeah, the, the let's say the, the smoke angle that they are making uh, while going out of the chimney, there is a, a fluid go, uh, entering as well, uh, sorry, a flow entering and a wind, let's say, entering the, this uh, wind tunnel here. And they compare many, many differences. I have just extracted two here to show how good this, uh, this route can be for the smoke dispersion. Here. And that's all. I hope you, you enjoyed this presentation. I hope uh, I, I give you a complete overview of everything we can do with the software. And if you have any question, of course, please let me know. Webinar, thank you for the, um, as I said, overview. Um, there have actually been quite a few questions during um, right. during this session. Yeah. Um, one is about, uh, so it's an Express user and his yeah. question is, um, our customers for the Americas Cup, are they actually using Hexpress? Or um, are, they, are they using a, another uh, meshing tool here? They are using Express, absolutely. And if I can give, I don't know how much details I can give, but uh, I know also um, uh, something very particular on top of it. So Express is definitely used by them. Um, I mentioned initially uh, that we can, in, in, in our portfolio of tools, we have structure and unstructured, right? And something I didn't mention is that we can actually combine them both at the same time as well. It's a, very, a bit particular. I invite you to check uh, the Numica website for a blog article on all these kind of things because I have written two articles on that. One is about the, how to mesh nice hydrofoil because, you know, America's Cup hydrofoil are the key, <laughs> definitely. And so you can combine a structure mesh and an unstructured mesh to be able to make a nice mesh alignment, um, initial mesh alignment with the foil to make sure that the mesh is planted with a nice uh, accuracy. Because it's key to predict cavitation, ventilation, uh, of course, accuracy, lift and drag, of course, without. Uh, uh, so yeah, yeah. So they're using Express by default for the, for the whole um, uh, boat and then they can, on top of it, uh, use a structure initial mesh to be able to have, to have a nice combination of meshes. Okay, and uh, following up the meshing, <clears throat> mm -hmm. Express is a um, volume to surface mesher. And yeah. um, some users say, okay, but there's other meshing tools around that go the other way around. They start from the surface and then go into the uh, 3D field, into the far field. Cool. What is the status here on our side? Yeah. Um, so Express is exactly that. So you start from the volume with a very coarse mesh, you refine progressively all the cells, you project them on the surface, and service goes layer, and that's it. Uh, it's very powerful to be able to make any kind of, uh, of geometry. The one that you see, the, the nice picture that you see on the screen here, is made with Express. So it means that you can mesh pretty much everything, right? Um, you have other way around where you start from the surface and you go in the 3D field. Uh, this method is called S2V, so surface to volume. And it's something we started to, to propose as well to the industry. Uh, and it's available in Omnis Express. So it's our brand new uh, software where we, we collect and we, we, we accumulate all the tools that we have into one unique interface. Uh, we are not proposing that by default to the, to the, to the marine industry because it's not strictly necessary, but I see great future especially for propeller meshing. For propeller meshing, I see a great potential to be able to mesh with S2V. 
uh, I, I presented that our, at our user meeting last year. Uh, I can always send you some extra information on it. You can also download the presentation from our, our Numeka website uh, for all our meshing uh, strategies. But I see a great potential for, for S2V methods for, for propellers, yeah. Okay, so nice things coming up here. Um, this already also touches the next question. Um, so some Numeka users are actually uh, attending. And the question yep. is, um, what is the status of C Wizard and uh, and Omnis? In Omnis, okay. Um, okay, maybe let me give a 10 seconds word about Omnis because I see that it's a, <laughs> it start to spread uh, the news, of course, about Omnis. Uh, yeah, Omnis is, is really a thing now. It's it's uh, our new environment, and I think I insist on the tool on the on the word sorry environment because it's not just a simple new interface. It's more than that. We are plugging in our tools ourselves and you can also plug your own external uh, software inside on this all right i will not give more details here but that's very these keywords are very important it's an environment very modern using the latest graphics uh uh drivers latest uh, um, uh coding standards and so on very uh, much efficient uh and so the, the progressively we are uh, putting all our software into this environment without losing at any moment the relation with the application that we are concerned with. We still have uh, a turbo application, we still have uh, automotive application, which are our other standard and you make here, here. And the marine one is going to, do, we start the integration this year, all right? So having the C-Wizard into Omnis is tomorrow. That will come along with, with, the, with the integration of the five marine software into Omnis at the same time. Uh, given the great potential from this, uh, I will also give you a hint on that. Uh, uh, in Express, for instance, uh, the the um, we are still uh, asking, acti um, sorry, uh, asking the user to prepare the geometry so that there is no hole in the geometry, for instance. This is something we can tackle in Omnis directly. There is no need to take care about it. All right, we can we can fill the holes or we can actually start meshing even if there are holes. If we can go over it, no problem. So in terms of geometry requirement, it's much lower than what we are asking right now to into Express. That brings to the C wizard, the C wizard itself. Everything is Pythonized also in Omnis. So the only thing that we, as a CFD provider or C wizard provider, have to do is to start uh, coding it, but. Uh, there is absolutely no no limitation in terms of that. So as soon as you will start with uh, to integrate Omnis, we'll start as well the C with our integration. So of course it will be ported. Okay. Then we have uh, uh, so we have five minutes left for the discussion. Um, we have a few questions regarding um, sailing boats. First thing, yeah. um, adaptive grid refinement. Um, yes. Is it also possible? Is it limited to dual fluid simulations? or can we uh, use it on a wider range of applications? The adaptive redefinement, you meant? Yeah, for example, like uh, wind studies and uh, and things like that. Yeah, okay, I see, I see. Um, adaptive redefinement, so it's uh, it's it's a big feature. It's uh, It has been our one of the, our best advantage for many years, and we have a huge experience in that field. We are even leading uh, conferences on these subjects for adaptive redefinement, uh, thanks to our uh, developers. Uh, we can apply that to uh, free surface capturing, cavitation, pocket capturing, uh, pressure gradients, velocity gradient, uh, vorticity. We can apply that to, uh, I'm sure I'm missing a lot uh, here. Uh, we can even combine them. So you can combine a free surface capturing with cavitation and plus pressure gradient if you want. So it, it means that you can make uh, uh, I think you, I guess you have seen my initial uh, animation where I was showing overset interpolation capturing. So we make sure that the interpolation is always the best. We can capture the the free surface uh, elevation, so the waves generation. And imagine that you have a propeller running which is cavitating. No problem. You can also make it at the same time. Okay. Uh, if if we want to go for the, honestly, we for all the um, application we we start to use it almost by default so it's, it's becoming also the standard on our side if i go to the wind studies which is one of the latest application i mentioned uh you will have dedicated criteria for temperature as well i didn't mention this one but temperature and solutes are also part of the list of criteria that you can ask for the additive refinement to capture 
So if you go for wind studies, since I mentioned you can capture pressure and velocity gradient, all the big vortices can be captured with the, with adaptive refinement, uh, and also the temperature going out or the smoke going out of the chimney. So definitely yes, you can use for the for all this application it can be used, and it should okay. be used actually. <laughs> Um, another question regarding um, the zookeeping and wave generators. Can we actually make more complex waves, not just um, the standard um, Stokes wave up to a given order? Can mm -hmm. we combine? Can we com can we make linear combinations of uh, waves to give a, a desired spectra? So indeed, uh, I mentioned that you can make a regular wave. Uh, Many others, you can make irregular waves. We have uh, Pearson Moscovich, uh, uh, we have uh, what are the other names? Uh, John Swap, uh, we have uh, we have three or four spectrum, pretty fine uh, spectra, sorry. Uh, you can also impose your own spectrum, right? So you have a user defined spectrum. And uh, we are going to provide uh, very soon, I think, yeah, the development is already done. We just need to now to integrate it, uh, a, 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 what we call a dynamic library. So it's a user-defined function that you can program it yourself to code your own wave generator. So it's limitless, absolutely limitless in terms of possibilities for wave generation, yes. Okay, coming back shortly to um, sailing boats. Yes. Do we have some sort of VPP included in our software and can we couple Hydro forces and aero forces, and another question combined to that: Can we calculate the heel angle of the boat due to the wind force acting on it? Yes, and the answer is yes to everything. <laughs> I guess I, I should elaborate a bit. Um, yeah, sorry for not having the time to to explain all this into details uh, as well. And I will come back on the streaking correction, by the way, that you mentioned in, in your uh, talk, uh, as well. Uh, yes, we actually are. Very happy to announce that uh, we announced that end of last year at, at our user meeting, we have a new collaboration with uh, Naval Architect, which are experts in that field in, uh, in a French uh, company called Finocon. Uh, they are developing sailing boats since many, many years, and they actually they started to code themselves a dynamic VPP. So that's not a single VPP, but a standard VPP, but a dynamic one. And we are pleased to announce that we integrated that into uh, into Fire Marine. So thanks to their stellar experience uh, and CFD experience as well, we integrated that directly into the software. So I guess we are the first and unique uh, commercial code on the market uh, offering this possibility directly into a CFD uh, package to offer a dynamic VPP as well at the same time. And yes, we can do uh, a five off uh, simulation, uh, computing the healing of things to the wind force if you want, uh, acting or taking into account the rudder force, the, the change of position, uh, etc. There is absolutely uh, no problem on that. Uh, so again, I think I should definitely invite you to to watch my my presentation from the last user meeting. Uh, it's for free. You go on our website; it's, it's available directly. I, I'm, I have uh, four slides on this subject, so it's uh, quite uh, quite important and uh, to know. Uh, you mentioned this, uh, for the sailing boats uh, the importance. Oh, sailing boat and high speed boat actually the, both are, are are concerned about this uh, numerical uh, issue it's called streaking or streaking or, or numerical ventilation it's another word uh, for this phenomenon where the air is numerically trapped and uh, under the hull and we see sometimes that the hull is actually dry while well, uh, it should be completely wet uh, so we have dedicated algorithm for this that we developed something like 8 or 9 years ago already fully bulletproof um and it's, it's as soon as you, for instance, in the sea wizard, if you, you click and say, I'm doing a sailing boat or I'm doing a, a, a planning regime uh, for high speed boats, automatically behind the scene, we know that you might experience some uh, venti numerical ventilation issues. So we automatically activate our numerical correction. Uh, it's a numerical artifact that we correct with a numerical correction. And all this is well uh, mastered uh, as well at, uh, on, this, uh, on this subject, yeah. Okay. We are one minute behind the schedule, but still there's one question I would bring to the table um, because it covers another topic and that is propulsion and especially self-propulsion. Uh, can we do multiple propellers in self-propulsion mode? Can we do contra-rotating propellers? Can we have uh, different RPMs of the various propellers? What is uh, the capabilities there? <laughs> so so the, the, the whole thing. <laughs> um, so 
I'm sure that we can do multiple propellers. Uh, I even had a slide on this. I think uh, I skip it maybe too fast, but uh, we can do single propeller. We can do uh, two propellers with contra rotating propellers. Uh, what I don't remember to be fully transparent with you is can we have a different RPM? Uh, if it's a model propeller, so really model with a sliding grid, um, can we have a different propeller RPM? No, I think we lost your voice again. Yeah. We lost your voice, you know. And the camera. Um, so, okay, I think um, the answer is only halfway given, but uh, there is possibilities. Just to make it short, we have an option called dynamic library where we can control and, and steer the flow solver as, uh, as it uh, runs. And you can, you, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you have the rotation speed and so on. You can do that free with the actuator disk, and all of them can have a separate or different rotation speed. Yes. Okay, Benoit, thanks a lot. Um, I think it's now time to switch over to uh, my colleague Archie Povanto, um, yeah. and he will give us some ideas about HPC and cloud computing. So, okay. Archie. Just a second. Thank you. Thank now you, you are the oh. now you are the moderator. Okay. Uh, do you see my screen now? Do you do you hear me? Uh, we can. Yeah. Now it's coming up. Perfect. Okay. Do you see my screen? Uh, can you hear me clearly? It works for me. Okay. Good. 